Welcome back, fellas, to the show. We appreciate you. Uh, not only are you guys good friends of mine, but you make fantastic music. I appreciate you be even being interested in doing a follow-up. My co-host today goes by the name of Panic. Panic, this is Promotive. Uh, fellas, Welcome, guys. Hello, Panic. first, how was the tour? Give me give me the summary. Give me, give me the details. It was dope. It was super cool. Uh, we did about a week and a half on the road. We started at Chain. Uh, went down through San Diego and up through like Sacramento, Vegas, Arizona area. It was a good time. Really, uh, really well received by a lot of the different areas. Um, but it was a good, it's just a good time. Like a lot of great bands, a lot of great people that we met out there, a lot of great venues and promoters and stuff. It was, it was a good time. Something always goes wrong on the road at one point. <laughs> Tell me one or two times when something went wrong on this on this mini run. Hmm. The pay? No. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get paid enough. No. No. Um, so there was a mishap with money at at a venue, and oh my it was, gosh, yeah, I forgot about that. It was um, it was interesting to say the least. But without getting into too much detail, we were able to work it out with the venue and one of the other acts that had uh, accidentally walked away with everyone's, like... <laughs> yeah, but everyone's cut of the night. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, what happened was we, we get to this venue, and they don't really know who the, the touring band is. No one really communicated that. Um, and so, at the end of the night, one of the, opening, uh, one of the opening acts went up to the promoter and was like, hey, so, like, I heard we were getting paid out tonight because there was an original plan to pay out all of the, the bands on the bill. Right. Um, but then something happened. It was like, oh, well, we'll just make sure the touring gets the touring band gets paid at least. And so this opening act goes, is like, hey, I heard we're getting paid. And the guy's like, sick. Here's all the money from the night. And oh, so man. Then, I go to settle up at the end of the show. It's like, hey, like, um, I'm I'm with the touring band. I'm here to settle up. It's like, oh, I gave it to one of your guys already. He's like, oh, what? Did you, who was it? And he's like, oh, he was about this tall and wore a beanie. It's like, okay. Who was it? So, right. I don't know. He was this tall and wore beanie. Like that narrows it down. <laughs> so this is whole fiasco. It's it like a lot, bunch of he said she said. And one of the one of the other bands that was on the bill was super cool about like, hey, we know the opening act. We'll, we'll give him a call because they'd already left. They were already gone. Um. So they gave him a call. They drove all the way back. We settled it and like, it was it was it ended well. But that was pro probably the, I guess the messiest part of tour. Mm. Which is kind of a good thing. Everything else was pretty good. Cool. I mean, at least they were they were like some kick ass dudes and and zelled you back or whatever the case yeah. may be. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Panic. What what question would, might you have for Promotive? Well, I, I love their sound, right? And everybody on the stream knows I'm a pop punk guy. So was it one member that kind of influenced everybody, or were all you guys pop punk fans when the band started? We're all pop punk fans for sure. Um, you can't see him in frame, but Michael's here too. He's our other guitar player. What's up, Mike? How's it going? And then <laughs> Melly Mel Mel's around there somewhere. I've seen him wandering around. Um, and then Mel Mel's doing some some, some wizardry right now. <laughs> some wizardry. Um, but yeah, no, we're all we're all fans of pop punk in some way, shape, or form. Um, but we all are also fans of like other forms of music, which I feel like influences a lot of the stylistic choices that we do. Everything from like the production of like the the synths and the beats all the way to like heavier moments where we can throw a blast beat during <laughs> one of the songs um things like that Hell your yeah. video was awesome I, do you it, guys work on your own production do you let someone else direct direct that do you have influence how does that work i like the bananas by the way that was so cool. funny enough right now uh as you can tell we're all together but we're actually in a writing trip and one of the things that we like to do is um, between either myself, Mel, um, we'll go in, we'll do a lot of the production, either sound design or coming in and figuring out what synth patches and stuff like that. Everything is done from the back of someone's room or garage. Yep. So everything that you're hearing, that was produced in like a home studio that I built in the back of my garage. 
That's where you do awesome. all your all your your videos for for all your uh, sponsors and stuff, right? Yeah, Fortin, Fortin, and all of them, which you can plug by the way if you'd like, Mel. Oh yeah, yeah, Fortin, Legator, FGN. Uh, we we plug into those things. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. What's what's up? Uh, what's goals for for twenty twenty three? Like, what's what's some goals you guys have set for the band? I know some of you are in multiple projects, but just regarding promotive. Yeah, I mean, we started this year off all by kind of walking away from the city and driving out to the middle of the desert to write the next record. So that's kind of setting the whole tone of the rest of the year. Because now we're what four days into this trip, we've got about fifteen tracks that are more or less written out that now we're going to just spend the rest of the time polishing up and uh, figuring out which ones are the best ones to put out first, that whole thing. Um, and then from there, it's just a lot more shows, a lot more touring, if we can help it, see if we can land another big show like Boys Like Girls. We played with Boys Like Girls earlier this, or last year. That one looked like it was packed, it was too. Packed all it was, the yeah. balls yeah. to the wall. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. So okay. you're, you're going to complete the entire album and then figure out the singles and where, where you're going to go from there. Yeah, I'll probably take like, okay, we got 20 songs and like these five or six are the best ones. So we'll put all these out as singles and then we'll go from there, see what happens. Just kind of feel out what what everybody's feeling. Do you do you guys, mm-hmm. some some of you guys have fairly decent music connections. Uh, do, you, do you anticipate shopping the CD pre-single release or just completely go independent? I think it would have to depend 100% of like where my mindset's at with everything. It's just what are they able to do what we can't do? So Makes we sense. record ourselves, we shoot our videos. Um, I have friends who are in touring bands that have helped us create our own tours. Like obviously if someone's able to promise us or to get us that on a much bigger scale it makes sense that's probably something that we're going to explore but when it comes down to just signing to say that we got signed and then they give us the same resources that we have in our backyard that's going to be a, a hard conversation <laughs> yeah it totally makes sense and it, it, i feel like if you can just do it yourself if the la- if the label or whoever is not going to give you something just outstanding that blows you out of the water that is fairly hard to achieve then that's kind of the reason to go there but uh now mel jacob aj i know you guys very well but mike sir i don't know you that well if i could i'm gonna ask (laughs) you a question or two uh what how did you meet the fellas and part two what what would you say what artist of any genre is your biggest influence uh, let's see. I've known Jacob since high school. Uh, yeah. we've been playing in bands since like 2011, 2012, yeah. uh, in various different genres. Um, and I met Mel probably around 2014, 2015. Uh, really? he was working at NAM, and you introduced me to him. That's and it was just right. kind of like random. It's like, hey, this is Mel. I'm like, cool. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think like, oh, I didn't think it was a band or anything. Really. And then met AJ, uh, once, uh, these guys got this project going together. And um, I remember talking to Jacob at one point, he mentioned like wanting to potentially bring a, a guitarist in um, to Promotive. And uh, I think we talked about it at first just for enhancing the live experience, just having someone else to play lead, sing harmonies and stuff. Um, and then spending a lot of time around these guys. And I don't know, it just kind of, at least on my end, just kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, yeah, no, it was all a lie. This is what planned all the <laughs> He hasn't punched me yet, so. <laughs> Good. When, when he punched, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> and then and then yeah. Mike, um, who would you say is your is your biggest musical influence that even made you want to pick up a guitar and do what you do? Oh geez, all the way back at the beginning, I think in middle school, most people that like music or heavy music and guitar probably start learning a bunch of Metallica songs. Um, that was a big thing. Uh, metal <laughs> was always a big thing. All the bands that Jacob and I have been in, all metal bands. Um, and then for this kind of thing, falling back on the love of pop punk growing up on. Uh... Did you fellas bring any hot sauce by chance? There is a bottle of hot sauce somewhere around here. Excellent. Excellent. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> the reason I ask is we gotta at least ask you guys one more trivia question now that the whole gang's here. Uh, let's say let's say we're back on the road. You happen to have a 2002 DVD player in in the van, and it works. The TV works. The DVD player works. What what is the one thing that you guys could watch so many times? And if I ask you trivia about this one movie, you will not get stumped. Okay, when you say 2002, is it like the DVD from 2002 or the movie from 2002 or before? Disregard the year. Any any movie from any okay. year. I was making a really I, joke. I, I'll say this, and the guys can disagree with me, but I know for sure that I can watch Star Wars Episode Three countless times and never get tired of it. Because okay. when I was a child, I watched that movie so many times that I broke my DVD copy of it. Is that is that Revenge of the Sith or is that the second one? Okay. Uh, Panic, go ahead and shoot another question or two off. I need to look up some trivia real quick. Hmm. Mike, you made a transition from heavy metal to uh, to pop punk. When did that, when and how did that happen? That's, I kind of made the same transition myself, but it was over a long number of years. How did you get there? I mean, I feel like it's, there was always elements of uh, kind of just messing around with playing pop. I mean, as long as I've been in bands with Jacob, we've kind of talked about uh, exploring, writing pop punk songs and just having a fun time learning them and everything. Um, never really pulled the trigger on being in a pop punk band until uh, I joined this. Um, but as far as the transition, I mean, there's, well, I've always kind of appreciated that there's a lot of those punk, pop punk bands explore the heavier side of uh, of their sound and uh, some just kind of go deeper into that and some don't really explore it at all so just getting to explore that kind of heavier side and some of the stuff that we've written this week has really gone off the deep end on how heavy a pop punk band can get oh I um, love that yeah hey, I was going to say that's cool you know <laughs> bass guitar and drums it has that you can, it's all in there so. by the way I found yeah. the hot sauce that'll work Taco Bell mild will work mild on brand mm. For those that don't know, I love Taco Bell. I force that on everybody. I love Taco Bell too. I love Taco Bell too. The key is the cheesy gordita crunch, but rotate in the spicy Doritos shell. That's the key right there. All right, let's see if we can stump you on uh, on your Star Wars Revenge of the Sith trivia. Oh, cool. Here we go. At one point in the movie, Obi-Wan uses a blaster instead of a lightsaber. Afterwards, he looks at the blaster and says, what? <laughs> that is correct! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> that is correct! Damn it! I gotta do the hot sauce. I'll do it. We just did not have time to do that today. We did not have time to bust out a Mad Lib. Uh, so I'll, I'll spin it again here in, in a bit. But um, fellas, I know the follow-up interviews are a little bit shorter than the initial first one. But uh, is there is there a timetable for, for the release that you've got in mind? End of summer, uh, early fall. Is there anything that you can, you can tease or tell us about regarding uh, the new stuff coming out? So we have stuff that wasn't on this record that's already like recorded mm -hmm. per se and we're, we're we have a couple shows scheduled in march right and we're probably going to try to line something up around then okay. and 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 i guess that what i can say i don't know what you want to say um <laughs> yeah i i want to say that there may be something very soon i would say probably like early to mid spring so stay tuned for that um, we did shoot a music video yeah, we on shot the a, whole tour. We did shoot a music video on the whole tour um, cool. for a new song that we did for that tour. And I can say this, that it is the fastest song we've really we've made so far. It's the most energetic, most angsty song we've written so far. Um, and I'm excited for you guys to hear that. I'm uh, excited too. So, yeah. I would probably is, is, there, is, is there... Spring sounds good. Okay, so fairly fairly soon we get something. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. Cool. Is there is there ever plans to do another Asylus show? 
Melly Mel? I do not. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. Those are those are always a good time. Those are always a good time. And I imagine maybe March or after you guys will be back at Chain, your favorite stomping grounds. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, I think that's for sure. I can say this, that we have two shows in March. One, I think, has already been announced, I think. The one in L.A. We're playing in L.A. in March. I believe March 22nd. Yes. Um, and then we have a couple other shows piggybacking off of that. It's like a little mini tour that uh, there will be details coming soon on that. But if you're in the L.A. area, March 22nd, we'll be out there. March 22nd. Mark your calendar. Uh, panic. How far do you guys go to play? I'm in Detroit. Well, so I said, how far do you oh. guys go to play? Right. I'm in Detroit. So <laughs> I'd meet I you I'm here halfway. Talks. Yeah, I think there are talks sometime in the summer to do something out in the Midwest. Cool. Uh, so oh, hell yeah. That. I think we're trying to do something out there, too, if we can swing it. That is awesome. If, if you know people, get there. We will get there. <laughs> yeah. Jacob and I have played in Detroit. Yeah. Before, like in that area before. Yeah. I think we were in Lansing last time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Very I'm cool. Have to, I've been to Chicago to see bands. I mean, I'll I'll travel a little. Right on. Awesome. Yeah, that would be good. We'll send the squad to support if we can. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, Panic, what would your final question be for, for the band? Hmm. I'm not. Re- are you guys going to. Are you planning on releasing this group of music in one album or are you going to do several drops like we've seen in the past with, with other bands to maybe keep interest up? Yeah, probably, probably like one song at a time for right now. And I think like the, what we planned for this last batch of songs that's out right now is just dropping them one by one and once they're all out then we'll put them in a little collection um that'll probably be the same plan for these next batch of songs cool do you have any weird uh warm-up things that you do jacob to hit all those yes all those crazy high notes and stuff you have any cool funny stories about how you warm up your voice so my warm-ups are very non-traditional because i don't do scales because i feel like that's a waste of time so <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, what? I'm just saying, that's not, because here's the thing, here's the thing. A lot of people that I know tend to over warm up. So they warm themselves up and they feel really good. And then they get on stage and 10 minutes in their, their voice is gone because they, they, they went too hard on their warm ups. Vice versa is the same. Like I know people who don't warm up enough. Um, I like to do these weird, just like it's the, the like the lip roll, the yeah, like yeah. that, but I'll like do really sporadically like and then after that i switch from lip roll to like a like a like a hum and i'll do the same thing and i'll just do that <laughs> and then i like once i do those two things i open it up to like a full like uh like, uh, like that i do that do that again it's <laughs> not like a wild wild so bird in the jungle like, or something right there <laughs> yeah. so i do a bunch weird noises like that to like build up to the things i do <laughs> hell yeah awesome well all the social media links are at promotive ca correct yep hell yeah if you guys are watching please go support them hit the follow button subscribe button especially if you're on spotify please slap the follow button right there like i have sorry it's not on the screen now it's on the screen please hit the follow button right there uh gentlemen it's always a pleasure mel Jacob, AJ, my new buddy Mike, ladies and gentlemen, come on! Give me a hell yeah! Thank you, fellas. I appreciate it. Have an excellent, excellent day.